morning, church. Good morning, church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For this is the day the Lord hath made. Let us be glad for the opportunity to rejoice in him. May we pray. Gracious and merciful and all wise God, our Father, we thank you in the name of your Son for extending to us grace. You woke us up this morning. You started us on our way. And here we are, gathered in your name to give you the praise, to give you the glory, to give you the honor. One thing we desire of thee, O oh Lord, grant us your presence, that as we worship you in spirit and in truth, let us leave here knowing we have been truly blessed. Speak through your manservant that good news that we desire and need to hear. We lift this prayer request in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. And God's people said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. With heart and mind, and spirit, let us join with the choir in that affirmation of, oh, how I love Jesus. And let us sing it like we love him.
Good morning, friendship. Anybody come to give God praise this morning? Has he been good to somebody on your own? Go ahead and shake their hand and say, it's good to see you this morning. I don't know about you, what you come to do, but I come to give them praise.
Good morning, friendship. As we are in the spirit of praising the good Lord, a hymn that I remember comes to mind. As we prepare to enter this period of intercessory prayer, and it simply says, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care. And what it does, bids me at my father's throne, makes all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief and often scape the tempter's snare by dying return, sweet hour of prayer. For those who are willing, please stand with me as we go to God in prayer. Let every heart pray. Gracious Father, we are grateful for yet another opportunity to find ourselves in your presence in these hollowed walls. We've come, Lord, from a world that's full of care and strife and anger and evil, a world that each and every day grows more frightening. But we come, Lord, to your throne of mercy and your throne of grace to bring all our cares and all our concerns no matter where we stand, no matter what has been uttered or not uttered, Lord, you know the hearts of every individual that stand here now. You know the situation of everything that takes place in this world. So we come to this house of sanctuary, this house of refuge, this house of peace where we can find joy and where we can find comfort, where we seek your presence to do for us that which only you can do to revive, renew, and yes, Lord, equip us with the full armor of God that when we leave these walls, we will go out into the world once again equipped to fight the battles that you have called us to fight, doing it in your name and bring all glory, honor, and majesty to you. Now, Lord, we ask that you would touch the minister as he come to declare your word. Fill him with your spirit. Allow him to be used by you that as he proclaim what thus saith the Lord, it will renew us revive us and send us into the world that as we go out into the world we will be the salt of the earth that what we speak will help and season in the lives of those that we meet and that whether we say anything or not by our behavior the light of your sun will shine brightly in our lives to tell a world that we serve a savior that is alive and that he is alive and that we trust and love him and that he will see us through Hear us, Lord, as we pray, for this is our prayer. And we don't ask it amiss, we ask it in the name of Jesus, who at that name, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. And let all the saints say amen, amen, amen.
Uh, put some chats in the comment. Let us know that you're there. I would also like to welcome our first-time visitors. Anybody that's been visiting with us for the first time, uh, just stand. You don't have to say a word. Just stand so we can recognize you. Any first-time visitors? Amen. 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 Thank you so much. I, I do want the group that's right here to keep standing because I do want a, a special recognition for them. Now, I'm going to say a couple words that are not in the script, so Frank may never ask me to come up again. But I do want to recognize the very best college in America and possibly in the world. And I say that simply because of two reasons. One, my daughter went there, and I'm dear friends with the uh, current president, and the education they do is just phenomenal. And we have with us the uh, class of 1975 from Spelman College. Please give them a round. Thank you so much. No hate mail, no, <laughs> no letter, letters. Uh, I do want to, though, all the first-time visitors, we certainly appreciate you being here at Friendship. Uh, you could have been any place, but you chose us, and we do appreciate that. Um, come back and visit us again, and if you get tired of visiting, what do we say? Yes, it's simple. Join us. We love you here at Friendship. I do have a couple of announcements I need to make. As many of you know, this is Men's Month. Next Saturday, we will have the Men's Health and Wellness Walk. It's a 5K walk. You can join with a partner. You can go online and sign up. It's being sponsored by the African American Male Wellness Agency and the Brotherhood of Friendship. As I said, this is the third year of this event. A couple of important things. Number one, there'll be free, and I said free, health screenings. And for us men who sometimes are afraid to go to the doctor, this is an opportunity to get your free health screenings. For all the ladies who have any kind of relationship with a man, please push, scream, kick them there, kick them out of the house, make sure they join for this opportunity. And you're more than welcome to come as well because there will be activities for all adults as well as for children. Again, this will be this coming Saturday at 7 a.m. right here on Friendship Missionary Baptist Church's property. We will also have that Saturday a mental health symposium. And again, we know how important it is to check our mental health. That will occur at 12 noon. It will either be online or in person. And it's simply titled, Loving Me, Mind, Body, and Soul. So again, that's a very important part of our health aspect, the mental health. Um, also, that following Sunday, that Sunday the 15th, will be Men's Day. Now, I'm being said to say this, so anybody 12 years and older, all men, males 12 years and older, are welcome to come Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the choir, for the men's choir. So I'm going to repeat that, all males 12 and older didn't say whether you could sing or not. It just said all men 12 and older. <laughs> Rehearsals will be at 6.30 p.m. Again, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As you know, what Frank does with this choir is amazing. So please come out um, for rehearsal. <laughs> Finally, How Will Be Thy Name will be Tuesday, October 31st from 5.30 to 7.30, again on the campus. Uh, bring the children out. It is a fun-filled time. There will be all different types of activities from uh, bouncy houses to games, just a lot to do. It's a fabulous way of celebrating How Will Be Thy Name. So again, that's Tuesday, October 31st, 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. A quick reminder, starting in January, we will have uh, worship times. Now, we have two services, one at 8 a.m. and one at 10 a.m. So starting in January, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. I also want to mention that around the sanctuary for tithes and offerings, there's receptacles. You can either put your tithe offering, love gifts, in the, one of the receptacles, or you can do it online. So go to friendshipcharlotte.org to get all the information. For registration for all the things that I mentioned, again, go to friendshipcharlotte.org and you can get information. Finally, I want to introduce, and again, 
I'm not going to read what it says here because it says a guest minister, but when the guest minister implies that they hadn't been here much. But this is a family minister. This is home to him. Dr. Daryl Aaron, pastor of Providence Baptist Church in Greensville, North Carolina, will be our minister today. So when he comes up, please give him a warm welcome. Have a blessed week. Thank you.
Please give me a few moments to take in what I am experiencing. My friend Reverend Hargard says people like to ask him what is sin. And he says, he tells people sin is when you think too highly of yourself. So when I stand here today, I know without a doubt, somebody prayed for me. Yeah. 
had me on my dear mind and took the time to pray for me. My mama <laughs> prayed for me. Where's my mama? Hey, mom. Good to see you. Hallelujah. I celebrate the Spellman ladies who are present this morning. I, I agree with that fella. That is the best institution in America. My favorite child, Naomi, is a proud graduate of that fine institution. I'd like to acknowledge Pastor Jones and Ma Jones, who indeed have prayed for me. I highly recommend this day that you read the entire chapter of the Gospel of John. But for this sermon's post, please hear these words of Scripture, beginning with verse 35. The Gospel of John, chapter 9, beginning with verse 35. Hear now the words of Scripture. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. And Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. And then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. I love Eugene Peterson's offering for verse 36. The man said, point him out, sir, so that I can believe in him. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Witnessing for God. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. For I believe somebody is listening. Through Christ our Lord, we pray that the people of God say, Amen. As I stand here in the best place, black people can gather. I am reminded of that day. It was around the early 1980s. I and my classmates were in downtown Charlotte on a field trip to see the new erected Martin Luther King statue. It was a, a melancholy afternoon, clouds scattered the sky. And I recall so much about the day because I had to wear that bright yellow raincoat. And my, Lord have mercy. And my grandmother fixed me a lunchbox with an egg sandwich. <laughs> that left an eternal scent in my lunchbox. <laughs> well, as an, I and my classmate were standing near the statue, important people were walking through Marshall Park. Well, on this day, Eddie Knox, the former mayor, just happened to be one of the important persons, and he stopped to speak with us. And for comfort, I gather, he struck up a sidebar conversation with some of the boys, and, he asked several of us what sports and hobbies we liked. Well, for some odd reason, he asked me about the statue, which at the time I was the least expected to be asked anything. <laughs> and then he asked me what church I attended. May or not, he was taller than me, therefore he was looking down when he asked that question. I mean, Eddie Knox asked, what church do you attend? And I responded, I belong <laughs> to Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. <laughs> when Mayor Knox heard me say I belong to Friendship 
that white man looked me in the eye and then he looked up in the sky and said, that's a fine church. From that day forward, I knew there was power in belonging to the right people and belonging to the right purpose. All of my life, I have had the pleasure to tell people I belong to the friendship family. My pastor is the Reverend Clifford A. Jones, and I am a witness. Doors have opened, handshakes have lasted longer, and people all over the world have continued to look up. Recognizing you are celebrating men this month, I believe this church gave me what all black boys and men need, and that is a sense of somebodyness. I am unapologetic and unashamed to confess nothing could have impacted my life more than the black church. Listen to the sirens. Books are being banned. Votes are being suppressed. A narcissist is running for the highest office in the land. People continue to be adversely impacted by impassionate gun laws. And because of COVID, children all over this nation have vanished from school rosters. The black church still holds the most vital values we have to offer to this world. In many ways, that day in the park when Mayor Knox looked up, I discovered the black church's witnessing power. I am convinced more than ever, especially after COVID pandemic, the church's witness must become a priority. We've known for centuries human nature is falling and corrupt. Sinful human beings will run from grace every time they get a chance. The evidence is clear that the veneer of Religiosity in America has finally broken down and the church should reaffirm its calling as a hospice for sinners. And given the various diagnoses, this is the time to strengthen our witness. And on this glorious morning, we read from scripture, there should be an urgent call for somebody to be a witness. For a long time, I thought everybody was a Christian. I'm talking about a follower of Christ. I thought my neighbors, my teachers, my friends were in love with the gospel. Well, of course, later I discovered that everybody wasn't interested in goodness and truth. I confess, I was on the fence about witnessing. I didn't know I had to be all right with showing others what Christians look like. If others were going to know what Jesus was all about, I the least expected had to be a witness. So what is a Christian witness? Well, I'm glad you asked. A Christian witness is somebody who has experienced grace and love from Jesus and they share that love and grace with others. So our text this morning, I believe it might be one of the best written stories of the New Testament. Jesus heals a man who has been born blind and he chucks mud, Lord have mercy, with saliva in it on the man's eyes. You know the story. And he sends him to a pool to wash and there at the pool he gains sight and returns to town with a new vision. Now he is called to be a witness for what the Lord can do in your life. He is now to show others what happens when you experience the living God. The man with new sight is asked by members of the community to retell the story of his healing. And in doing so, he concludes that Jesus must be a prophet. However, can I take my time here? However, the gatekeepers of status quo, I say the gatekeepers of status quo, the Pharisees tried to make the once blind man keep his healer a secret. They want the man to deny and reject Jesus. 
Here is the lesson for those who are being asked to be a witness in secret. When God has healed you, created new space for you, has given you new eyes to see, don't let the world shove you underground. Remember, secret homes are like rocks under tide. When God expands your territory, it is done so you might be a witness to the new economy that God has to offer to this world. When God has expanded your vision to see yourself and others better, you don't have to cheapen your witness by selling out and conforming to those who have controlled your destiny in your oppressed state. Every time God heals or blesses you, it is to show the world that there's a new Lord in town and that new Lord has given strength to those who have no strength and has given sight to the blind and is exposing those who say they can see. And although this brother who is singing, I can see clearly now, <laughs> The rain is gone. They try to get him to deny Jesus, but he refuses to sit on the fence about what Jesus has done for him. Matter of fact, the brother latches on to Jesus with his whole heart, mind, and soul and tells everybody that Jesus is a prophet and a sight giver. He even witnesses to the Pharisees and sees them as possible disciples. Of course, of course, the Pharisees are so angered by this man's assurance that they throw him out of the synagogue into the street and the boy lands on his buttocks. The Bible tells us that when our Lord heard that the Pharisees had thrown the man out into the street, Jesus went and found this man, boy, y'all should have shouted right there. He found this man, and not surprisingly, Jesus reappears in the story just at the moment when the man is shoved out of the synagogue. Wow, cut off from family, cut off from religion, cut off from heritage, cut off from home. The brother is sought by Jesus and is offered a possibility of redemption. While the man is desperate for help, having no one to turn to, having lost everything that was dear to him, Jesus asks the man an important question. This is where I believe we must listen carefully to the conversation. Jesus asked the man, do you believe in the Son of Man? And the man said, point him out, sir that I might believe in him. This is where we must enter the story. There are times in life when you want to know whom and what to believe in. This man has had his belief system shattered. He used to hang out at the temple hoping those of goodwill would assist him. There at the gate of the temple, he used to beg. Family used to be something he always depended on. Now he's cut off from family out there in the middle of the street, cut off from everything. He believed in nothing to count on. He's asking Jesus, what do I believe in now? Point him out, sir, so that I can believe in him. When your loved one died and you've prayed, that God would save them. You want to know what you should believe in. When you've prayed for something to come to pass and it doesn't come to pass on your terms, when you have worked hard to build that marriage or career or life, you can call it what you want, and it dissolves right before your eyes when you have been healthy all of your life. And some odd sickness struts your body. 
We want to know where can you find strength and soulless for the journey. The man says, show me where to drop my anchor. Jesus asked the man, do you believe in the Son of Man? The man said, point him out, sir, so I can believe in him. This request of this man really strikes at the core of witnessing. Point him out, sir, so I can believe in him. The man asked Jesus to point him out. Who is Jesus? But that question is for all who are witnessing for God. Your neighbor, your co-worker, your family member, all right, your pew partner is asking Christians to show me what this stuff, to tell me, show me where this man named Jesus is. What does he look like? Point him out, sir, so I can believe in him. <laughs> I mean, just a few days ago, it's still fresh. I, I saw how easily I can outright blow the opportunity to point out Jesus so someone can believe. I mean, there is a reason why Scripture says work while it's day. <laughs> because that day it was uh, sunsetting time and I greeted <laughs> uh, guests at the church who, Lord have mercy, they needed Wi-Fi information, they needed a microphone, they needed the lights on, they needed a table for the computer and a projector. And then they wanted smiles after smiles after smiles and, and a whole lot more stuff. And, and matter of fact, I could easily say I thought they wanted more than I could give. Well, later on that evening while guests were closing up shop, one lady asked me, and three other persons who were standing in front of her, she said, show me the pastor so, he, so I can speak with him about the church's uh, exceptional hospitality. <laughs> well, my brothers and sisters, you never know who's asking to see, to see what living a life of God looks like. <laughs> You never know who's looking to see what it looks like to love without limits and serve with purpose. Oh, you never know who might need to know what it looks like to live simply. Give generously, speak kindly, care deeply. You never know who needs to know what does it look like to go to bed at night <laughs> and leave the rest up to God. God, somebody wants to give their life to Christ today. Somebody needs to know there's a church family praying for them. Somebody needs justice this morning. Somebody needs peace this morning. Somebody needs mercy this morning. You know, there's a little black boy that looks just like me who wants to learn how to look up on a cloudy day. There's a little black girl who wants to know, can I hold to a hand? like God's hand. Somebody needs to point him out, sir, so I can believe in him. You don't mind if I take a quick survey this morning, do you? Well, please, 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 raise your hand if this applies to you. Did God wake you up this morning, put food on your table, roof over your head and clothes on your back? All right, put your hands down. Can I ask one more question? Did God save you? Do you believe in the resurrection and it reveals that all things are possible with God? All right, can I just ask one more question? Have you ever done anything without the Lord's help? Well, everybody should raise their hand right there. Then you have the ability to do this when asked, point him out, sir, so that I might believe in him. 
People are looking for God. People want to believe in him. A child wants to see a teacher that cares. A patient wants to see a doctor that loves thy neighbor as thyself. A citizen wants to see a representative that is divinely directed to set the captive free. Point him out, sir, so that I might believe in him. What did you bring to worship today that has you wanting to believe in God? What do you have to work with when you leave worship that has you asking, show me, Lord, how to do this? I, oh, I got a holy hunch somebody wants to know, where is God this morning? And the answer is right in front of you. In verse 37, Jesus points out the one who the man needs to see so he can believe. Jesus says, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking to you. Oh, I thought my neighbors, I thought my teachers, I thought my friends were in love with the gospel. Of course, later I discovered everyone was not interested in goodness and truth. I did not know I had to be all right with being a witness showing others what Christians look like. Don't be shy. If praying during lunch disrupt others, please let it be a disruption and thank God for his bounty. If someone asks for prayer, don't say I'll be praying for you. Rather stop and provide a word of prayer. In fact, he is with you. In fact, he is the one speaking to you. Jesus is speaking this morning. As a matter of fact, you're looking right at him. Oh, when I heard Jesus say you are looking right at him, those words touched me in a deep place. I mean, this morning, I asked myself, who are you looking at? I'm talking about while I was brushing my teeth, trimming my beard and making sure no hairs were in my nose. You know, I knew I'd be on camera this morning and, and my mama would be watching me. But I asked myself, Daryl, what are you looking at? I said to myself, Daryl, boy, you know that little soreness is taking longer to heal than it used to. <laughs> And God knows cutting grass, boy, it takes a long time now. And you can't eat late and sleep well. Dad, who are you looking at? I confess Jesus' words, they touched me. Matter of fact, while pulling into the parking lot of the church, I was thinking about how high gas he is. <laughs> and when I parked the car, don't tell anybody, but I looked in the rearview mirror one more time just to get one more look before entering the church. And I asked myself one more time, Daryl! Who are you looking at? Well, as I was telling you about how many times I've had to ask that question, who is in front of you? I thought about that story that says there was a large group of people about like y'all gathered. You know, it said, on one side of the group stood a man, Jesus. And on the other side stood another, Satan. And this, this scene was set. Both Jesus and Satan. And they began calling people in the group. One by one, each having made up his or her mind, went to either Jesus or Satan. And this kept going on for some time. And soon enough, Jesus had gathered around him a group of people from the large crowd, as did Satan. And one man joined neither group. He climbed the fence that ran right down the middle of them. 
and he sat on it. Jesus and his people left and disappeared, and so did Satan and his people. The man on the fence sat alone. And as this man sat, <laughs> Satan came back looking for something which he appeared to have lost. The man said, have you lost something? Satan looked, looked him straight in the eye and replied, no, there you are, come with me. The man said, but I, I, I sat on the fence. I chose you nor Jesus. Satan said, that's okay, I own the fence. I hope you don't mind if I ask. What am I looking at? What fence are you sitting on today? Is there an injustice that needs to be corrected? Is there an application that needs to be filled out? All right, is there a doctor's appointment you need to make? Is there a person you need to forgive? Do you need to spend less time in one place and more time in another place? Is there a ministry you need to participate in? Is there a song you need to be singing? Is there a prayer you need to be praying? Is there a praise report you ought to be shouting this morning? What fence are you sitting on? When was last time you said yes to God? God needs witness. God needs somebody to testify about the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for you. I said God needs a witness. Storms, I'm closing now, storms may rise. Strong winds, or oh, you can say it with me if you know it, may blow, but I'll tell the world where I go, I found a savior, and he is sweet, sweet in the morning. Sweet in the afternoon and sweet in the midnight hour. Yes, he is sweet. So heaven has asked me to raise a question this morning before I take my seat. Can I ask it? Maybe I ought to do it another way. Are you ready for the question? Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Open, would you please rise? Glory, glory. If 
you don't have a church home or you haven't had the opportunity to join a church, please come forward now. Now is the time. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.